Welcome to another episode of Ask a Pianist. My name is Andrew Ahrens, and today we'll be looking at a problem which seems to plague many students who consult with me. Performing trills in music can be as easy as playing a scale, or as difficult as playing an etude, depending on the circumstances. And what I've noticed, even in professional recordings, is that one can hear quite clearly if the performer pays attention to their control of trills, or if they treat trills as merely decorations, that are not worthy of practice or study. So this episode is going to look at trills. Specifically, what we need to control and why we need to control it. The easiest way to start is to consider long trills. Foray's Second Nocturne is a beautiful study in refinement and poise, and gives us some wonderful material to work with. stormy middle section, he gives us a transition back to the main opening theme that is constructed using a single trill in the right hand suspended over a series of chords in the left. This trill needs to start softly and grow while supporting the chords that change underneath it, and to make matters just a wee bit more difficult, the trill doesn't end when the main theme returns but continues through it for a few beats. everything except the trill, and consider precisely what we need to control to make the trill do what we would like it to. First, we have to determine what the function of the trill actually is. Is this ornamental? Is it a note extension? Or is it a combination of both? Given the rhythmic value, the F-sharp cannot possibly be sustained for the prescribed length on the piano if played as a single note. Furthermore, it's impossible on the piano to make the sound grow on a note that has been played long before. So it appears that the purpose of the trill is not only to sustain the F sharp as a note that has harmonic consequences to the left hand accompaniment, but also to allow a way for the pianist to make the F sharp grow in sound. also say that it's ornamental? I think so, given that it continues through the first few chords of the recapitulation. It's a kind of sparkle to the conglomerate sound that adds to the aesthetic beauty of the piece. So, we've established the purpose. First and foremost, we're looking to sustain the F-sharp for longer than it can sound naturally and have it grow in terms of dynamic. Secondly, this sustenance has ramifications to the left-hand chords. And third, it provides a kind of beauty to the sound. Now, let's look at these three functions and how we can effectively convey them on the piano. How do we sustain a note 
and make it grow as a trill. Sustaining a note as a trill requires a few skill sets that a pianist must be comfortable with in order to control this area of technique. The actual trill involves an alternating finger pattern. 2-3, like this, and 1-3 are perhaps most common. Playing a trill should be a rather relaxing event. There is some tension in the hand at the beginning of most trills, but once you get the trill alternating, then you can loosen the hand completely and let the fingers alternate without any effort. In another episode, I mentioned the technique of playing above the escapement. This technique in particular is very useful when playing trills, because once you play a trill above the escapement, you lessen the total effort and weight required to depress the keys, thereby minimizing the effort needed by the fingers to produce a trill. If I play a trill down to the bottom of the keys, through the escapement, I'll get a trill like this. My hand cramps up a bit, and it's more difficult to maintain the speed and regularity of the trill. However, if I play above the escapement, this difficulty lessens dramatically. There is another way to escape the tension bubble that may be created when playing a trill. The fingering of 1-3-2-3-1 can be used as well, which perhaps allows for a cleaner or more melodic trill. Whatever fingering you use, as long as you play above the escapement, you should be able to trill for long periods of time comfortably. In order to make trills grow and recede in sound or dynamic, we can do two things. First, we can play to the escapement or through it. The deeper we go in the key, the louder and the more present the sound will be in the trill. This is above the escapement, and this is below. We can also add some more pedaling, which increases the sound buildup. We need to be able to control both of these aspects in order to grow or decay sound in a controlled manner. If I want the sound to grow gradually, I may first add pedaling and then gradually play deeper, like this. If I want the sound to grow very fast, then I'll do the opposite. I'll play deeper first. To get trills to recede or diminuendo, we always have to remove the pedal first. The reason is that you can control the depth of the key you're playing to in a more precise manner than the total resonance in terms of pedaling. Here's how it sounds. So, now we can grow and diminish trills, but that's just the beginning of the difficulty. How does the F-sharp interact with the chords in the left hand? Well, from a harmonic point of view, Foray couldn't have picked a better note to sustain for the return to the home key, because the F-sharp is common to both the dominant and tonic chords. Because it is the root of the dominant chord, and the fifth of the tonic, it's also the least intrusive note in terms of dissonance. But that doesn't mean that we can't tweak the trill slightly to create more dissonance when we wanted to. Remember that the trill is made of two notes, not just one, and although the F-sharp is primary, the G-sharp is also present. This G-sharp serves as a ninth to the dominant seventh chord, which means that it really functions gently as a member of the dominant chord and as an appoggiatura for the tonic chord. In other words, the G-sharp belongs and contributes to the dominant chord here, and it serves to resolve to the F-sharp when we reach the tonic chord here. What this means is that it may be beneficial to subtly shift emphasis in terms of dynamic towards either the F-sharp or the G-sharp when the situation calls for it. I may choose to put more emphasis on the G-sharp when the dominant chord doesn't have one, like here. And 
I may choose to put more emphasis on the F sharp once we've resolved to the tonic during the recapitulation, like here. The change in sound priority in individual trill notes is not a common technique that is taught, probably because, in truth, it is a very subtle effect and can usually only be perceived or noticed during long trills. Baroque trills, for instance, are usually too short for us to notice this kind of effect if implemented, and considering that they form the bulk of the trilling repertoire, trill note priority often gets forgotten. This is the kind of subtle trilling technique that I encourage my students to learn, because ultimately it provides a kind of control which an average student would leave to chance, namely, which notes are heard more prominently than others in a trill. Now we come to an area of performance which is, for the most part, quite personal and somewhat arbitrary. When we want to make a trill sound beautiful, we have several options that we can consider, depending on the instrument, the resonance space, and the audience. In this particular case, I'd say there are two ways we can go about it. The first is to emphasize the activity or energy within the trill. The beautiful aspect could result from us essentially pointing out the opposite aesthetics that are being confronted. We have a trill that is very active in terms of speed and notes being played over an accompaniment that is slow moving and chordal in nature. In order to accentuate the activity in the trill, we have to play the trill notes in a more percussive manner without the shape of the trill being damaged or harmed. This is a case of pure sound production alteration. So instead of a trill that is like this, I'd play the trill with a more percussive sound quality so that you can hear more notes being played even though this may not be the literal case. We can also look at beauty from the opposite angle, namely that we're going to blend the trill with the accompaniment as much as possible from a sound aesthetic perspective. Instead of playing it percussively, we're going to play it as smooth as we can, trying to hide the individual notes and create a kind of constant sound. But these are just options, and of course, one can play within those options or outside of them, depending upon what the circumstances call for. Long trills expose faults within a pianist's technique quite easily, and this is not always due to a problem with an instrument's regulation or even a poorly chosen fingering for the trill itself. Trills, like any other technical challenge, require practice and attention. So until next time, keep on practicing, and take a moment to examine your own trills in detail. Bye for now.